Hello everybody and welcome to the first video in this 5 episode series on how to create the Chrome Dinosaur game using Pygame. The next 5 videos are going to be structured as follows. We are going to begin by looking at how we can set up Pygame and get the dinosaur onto our screen. In the second episode of the series, we are going to be implementing the jumping and the ducking of the dinosaur. Then in the third episode, we are going to add a background which loops and also add a score. In the fourth episode, we will finally add some obstacles and implement the collision mechanic. And finally, in the fifth episode, we are going to sum up by adding a menu to our game. This tutorial series is directed at individuals who have already got a bit of prior experience with Pygame and Python, but I will be leaving a link in the description below to other tutorials which I have made that are a bit easier for if you find this too difficult. I also want to mention that all the code and all the images that I use are going to also be available on my GitHub, and I'll be leaving a link to that down in the description as well. Finally, I want to mention that I'll be coding all of this in PyCharm, so if you want to go ahead and download that, then make sure you do. Okay, so let's get started and create a new project in PyCharm. To create a new project, we simply have to go to File, New Project, give our project a name, and press Create. Now we need to drag and drop the folder with all the images we're going to use into our file structure. Remember, the images are all going to be available on my GitHub in a folder called Assets. I'm going to be leaving a link to that in the description below. So as you can now see, after dragging and dropping in the assets, I have them all included in my file tree. Since we're going to be using the module Pygame to code our project, we need to install it first. We do that by simply going to the terminal and typing in pip install Pygame. Then it's going to install, and now you can see that we have Pygame successfully installed. Now we can go back over to the file structure, create a new Python file, and start coding. To create a new Python file, we can simply right-click inside the folder structure, then click on New, then on Python file, give our Python file a name, and we're done. So the first thing we're going to want to do is import the module Pygame, and we also need to import a module called OS. Afterwards, we're going to initialize pygame by writing in pygame.init. Now we're going to go ahead and define a couple of global constants. The first are the screen height, which I'm going to set to 600, and a screen width, which I'm going to set to 1100. Now I'm simply going to go ahead and create the variable screen, which is going to define the display where our game is going to be shown. And as arguments, we are going to pass in the screen width and the screen height. After that, we're going to go ahead and load in all the images which we're going to require to build the game. Let's start off by creating a variable called running, which is going to store all the images of our dinosaur running. And we're then going to write pygame image load, and then we're going to add the path as an argument. So you can see here the image of our dinosaur running is in the folder called dino, which in turn is in the folder called assets. Since we have two images of a dinosaur running, which we're going to use to animate the dinosaur, we can make this into a list. So now that we've loaded in the images of our dinosaur running, we can also go ahead and load in all the images necessary for this project. So that is going to include our dinosaur jumping, our dinosaur ducking. It is also going to include objects such as the small cactus, the large cactus, and the pterodactyl, which I'm just going to call bird because it's easier to say. And let's not forget about the clouds which move across the screen, and of course the background image, which is going to be the track which our dinosaur is running on. If you've ever used Pygame in the past, you'll know that everything in Pygame runs in a while loop. And we're going to be putting the main loop inside a function called main. Some of you may be wondering why we're creating the main loop inside a function. It's going to become helpful at a later stage when we create the menu. And let's not forget to add the call to the function with the main loop inside. Then we're going to add a variable called run, which is going to be the switch for our while loop. And we're also going to add a clock to time our game. 
So now let's go on and create our main loop. Inside the main loop, we want to first create a possibility to exit the game safely. So by adding the small code block which I have just added, we are going to set the run variable to false whenever we press on the small x on the window. That is going to close our game and exit the while loop safely. Next we're going to add a screen fill which is going to fill the screen with the color white on every while loop iteration. After that we're also going to add the variable user input and we're also going to go ahead and add the player to the game. The player is going to be an instance of the class dinosaur which we are going to be creating in just a moment. And in the main loop we're going to call two functions on the player object. The first function is the draw function which is going to draw the dinosaur onto the screen. And the second function is the update function which is going to update the dinosaur on every while loop iteration. Finally we need to set the timing of the game and update the display. Alright, let's move on and create the dinosaur. We're going to first go up and create a class and call it dinosaur. We're going to add two variables called xpos and ypos, which are going to be the x position and the y position of our dinosaur on the screen. Now remember in the Chrome Dinosaur game the dinosaur is always stationary at one point, and this is exactly the coordinates that we're going to define. We're going to set the xpos to 80 and the ypos to 310. Then we're going to create an init method which is going to initialize the dinosaur whenever an object of this class is created. And this init method is first going to include all of the images of the dinosaur. First we're going to include the images of our dinosaur ducking, and then of the dinosaur running, and of the dinosaur jumping. And when we initialize the dinosaur, we want him by default to just run and not jump and not duck. So if you think about it, when you start off the Chrome Dinosaur game, the dinosaur is neither jumping nor ducking, he's simply running across the screen. So we're going to set the dino duck to false, the dino jump to false, but the dino run to true. The other variables which we're going to require are the step index, which is going to be required later on when we animate the dinosaur. Then we're also going to initialize the first image when our dinosaur is created. Afterwards we're also going to get the rectangle of the dinosaur image, which is going to be the hitbox of the dinosaur later on. And we want to set the x and y coordinates of the rectangle of the dinosaur image to the x and y coordinates which we talked about just a moment ago. Now we're going to go ahead and create the update function which updates the dinosaur on every while loop iteration. As an argument, the update function is going to get the user input. The first code block in the update function is going to check for the state of the dinosaur. And depending on whether the dinosaur is ducking, running, or jumping, a corresponding function should be called. Next we're going to add a step index which is going to be reset every 10 steps. This is going to help us animate the dinosaur further down the line. Now we want to create a couple of if statements that are going to help us set the state that our dinosaur is in. If we press the up key on our keyboard and our dinosaur is not currently jumping, then we want to set the jumping state to true and the others to false. Similarly, if we're pressing down, and the dinosaur is not jumping, then we want to set the duck to true and all the other states to false. And finally, if the dinosaur is not jumping and if the user input is not down, so the dinosaur is not ducking, then we want the dinosaur to simply run by setting dino run to true and all the other states to false. Now we can move on to create the separate functions duck, run, and jump. In this tutorial, we're going to leave the functions for duck and jump aside for the next tutorial, and today we're simply going to look at the run function. The run function has the variable called image, and this variable is set to the corresponding image of the dinosaur running. Now we can see why we introduced the variable step index. This variable helps us rotate through the individual images of the dinosaur running in order to make it look like he's being animated. And in addition to that, we also want to get the rectangle coordinates 
of the dinosaur image, and we want to set the rectangle coordinates to the position on the screen where we want the dinosaur to be displayed. And at the end of the run function, we of course want to increment the step index by 1. So when the step index is between the values of 0 and 5, the first image of our dinosaur is displayed, and when the step index is between the values of 5 and 10, the second image of our dinosaur is displayed. And beyond the value of 10, the step index is reset. So that means that the images are displayed sequentially the entire time, making the dinosaur look animated. Finally, we want to go ahead and create the function draw, which takes as an argument the screen. And this function simply blitz the image onto the screen. So now if we go ahead on it, we have the desired result. And in the next tutorial, we'll be looking at how we can make the dinosaur duck and jump.